I have one bobbin that is wound with the Scooterman 100% polyester thread. That will be the one that I keep in my bobbin case. Then I have an empty bobbin that I'm going to wind and then I'm going to take it off of the bobbin winder on top of my sewing machine and put it on the other post. I'll move you up so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's where I will be winding the bobbin using my regular thread in the usual manner that I wind bobbins. this to come from the bobbin in a counterclockwise motion. I'm just going to set it on my other spool up on top of my machine. So now I have two threads on this sewing machine. This area is different on most sewing machine from brand to brand, even you know, brand name but model differences can occur. My sewing machine does not have a split tension release in this area and it only has a spot for thread on the left side of this lift. So I don't have to worry about getting one thread on the left and one thread on the right of the tension release. That isn't to say that the machine you're sewing on, you might have some way to divide your thread and it's worth looking into if you think you might. Okay, so now before I thread these needles and are the, the two needles on this one twin needle, I am going to re-thread my bobbin case. So that my thread is going clockwise. All right, so that's in there. All right, I'm going to take the back thread and kind of just leave it off to the side over here. And using the front, I'm going to go ahead and thread my sewing machine in the usual manner. Right here. Maybe get you. No, I think you're down too far now. It's so hard to be my own camera person. Oh my goodness. <sighs> All right. Okay, right here. It's just pushed up through here. The feed dogs are down for the moment. And there's this little hole on the front of my throat plate right here that I'm going to thread the pearl cotton through. It's unfortunate because even though it looks warm outside, it's not, and my hands are icy cold. Okay, drop that down there and then reattach the throat plate. Okay, just push all that to the back and load the bobbin. And I recommend just being very slow, deliberate, and careful in the process of doing all of this. Now my feed dogs are down, so I need to raise those back and the way that works on this particular machine is you just turn the dial and then just wind it once toward you. Don't go forward and then backward. Just toward you is the proper direction. Okay, and then you'll see there's like this little opening right here. I'm just going to let my 
pearl cotton run through that little thumb indention and it, it will move very smoothly uh, through there. Now I don't want this on the floor but it needs to stay kind of in front of me where I can keep an eye on it. And one thing I used to do and I forgot about it is I used to put it in a bowl or a jar to keep it from falling off onto the floor but we're just gonna see. Now I've got to put on foot number 31 which is a pin tuck foot. This foot is generally used for a medium weight fabric, but I'm not going to worry about that. I don't think that it's going to be an issue with my lightweight fabric. I also want to reattach this back here. So you want the pearl cotton the bobbin thread and the two threads from your needles to be oriented toward the back of the sewing machine. All right, and then you take your fabric that you have marked. I'm using um, water erasable ink and line up your markings with the opening in your in the foot there's a, an opening for the needles to go through I want my machine just set on a regular stitch the default stitch with the needle down so I have engaged the needle down option and we're going to start sewing Okay, now I've come to the end of this row, and the thing is, I don't want to cut the pearl cotton so short that it won't stay, I won't be able to access it again. So I'm going to lift up this foot, I'm going to make sure that the needles are up, and then I'm going to pull quite a bit quite a bit and cut it so that I have quite a bit left. So I have about this much, whoa, where am I, that I have cut and left. That's kind of wasteful for me, but I, in this particular case, okay. So now I can kind of put my needle thread and bobbin thread and everything back to the back. Now this is what the corded pin tuck looks like right here. And it will be very much more evident once I've done them all and I've gotten the fabric washed and this blue uh, ink is washed out. But this is what it looks like on the reverse side. And as you can see, it just grabs that cord and keeps it straight and the twin needles just stitch right along either side of the cord in a straight line. Okay, and then we're just going to move to the second one. Now you might be able to see this piece of the foot right here is riding along this cord as much fun as it is to create these corded pin tucks, they look so pretty. They add such a wonderful touch to whatever it is that you're sewing. And of course, here's another idea too. This does not have to be for a baby. If you want to create pin tucks on the front of a blouse for yourself, or if you want to add this to a purse, fabric that you're using or a table runner. You can do so many things with pin tucks and corded pin tucks, but to stitch quickly and with disregard for what's happening to your sewing machine is 
not advised. I really feel like it's an opportunity for you to extend some care. Keep an eye on things. You've got two, two threads, two needles that can potentially, one could break, both could break. You could have some catastrophe moments. So just take your time, make sure everything is running smooth. And if you feel like something is wrong, it probably is. Like just now, as I was stitching, I thought, hmm, something feels kind of off. And sure enough, one of these threads had popped out of this hook right here and was just running along the front of my sewing machine and wasn't snugged up next to the needle. So I had to stop and fix it. And another thing, noteworthy thing, is that if you do have to rethread your sewing machine, don't take it all the way back to the beginning. If you pull the threads out to rethread and you can't remember which of the two was the right thread or the left thread, it w it's really not something you need to stress about. It's probably not going to matter in the sense that it won't on my sewing machine. So you might want to try just seeing if you can use either needle for either one of the thread placements in a test. Um, that might be a good idea, but I don't think it's going to create an issue. Um, I just like to thread it that way to begin with because I always keep hope in my heart that I won't have to rethread my sewing machine. But anyway, I'm going to keep going and unless I run across something else I feel like I need to share, I will show you what this looks like when I get to the very end. Now I'm going to turn this over so that the work I've done is on the left and the work I have to do is on the right. I'm working on the very last pin tuck here. So next we will just put this in some water and allow all of the water erasable ink to disappear. But as you can see, this is the back of the corded pin tucks. This is the front. And granted, it looks a little odd with the blue um, ink on here. So as soon as that's gone, I think it's a little bit easier to um, see the real pretty effect. If you're first joining us, this is the ink that I used to mark this little pin tucked area with. It is just simply a water erase pen. And I've marked all of the other pieces, the blue and the white, with this marker. So I'm going to try to keep as much of a distance between this and this bowl of water. And this is just a bowl of water. There is nothing else in it and it's not hot. It's just straight from the tap, cool water. And as you can see it's well marked. I think you can see it. There's a lot of that blue ink still on and what you're looking at is the front this is the back so it's pretty evident right along that top edge but there are some lines that run all the way through it and then of course the center line was my the line that I used to build out from so I'm just going to put it in this water And it honestly, it takes less than a minute for the ink to completely disappear. I'm just prepping with a towel here that I washed and dried in the dryer today just to have it ready for this. Now I do have to make sure that all of it is, there we go, okay. I believe we are good to go. 
piece up and gently kind of pressing and squeezing to remove the excess water. I am going to put this bowl out of the way over there. Okay. I've been putting all of this thread in my thread catcher over here. I think it is just beautiful. What I want to do is get something, sorry about my arm there. If I just put this press cloth behind it, it might allow you to see what I can see, which is the shadow of that blue cord. I think you can tell. This is the fabric without. Let me get my hand out of the way. And that's the fabric with. I think it is absolutely gorgeous. And this is the back. So basically if you look at it you'll be able to see that as the twin needle was picking up the bobbin thread it the thread was being worked between the two needles and it's almost a zigzag effect it's really more of a loop effect but I'll see if I can I don't know if you'll be able to focus in on that but it's quite pretty and the other thing I want to point out is if you don't want to do this uh, as a corded pin tuck. You can use um, a twin needle as I did without the cording and you will get beautiful tucks on your fabric. They just won't have that raised effect in there. Um, you can use any color of pearl cotton that you can get. Um, the only thing that you need to watch out for is the size of pearl cotton and the size of the twin needle. If your twin needle is spaced very far apart and you've got just kind of a barely there size 8 pearl cotton, it's not going to look very pretty. It's going to be a loose, um, a loose pin tuck with the pearl cotton just kind of floating around in there. The other problem is using a pearl cotton that is larger than a size 8 with a needle that is smaller than a 2.0 a or 20 slash 80. So those are things to just keep in mind. You are choosing your pearl cotton and your twin needle. They need to kind of mesh size wise. Okay, this is still wet and I do need to press it to pull out some of the puckering. Wow. 
the new project, which is this adorable um, apron. I just, I'm glad I did this because waiting for the additional supplies on the baby outfits has kind of made me stretch out my sewing. And I really want something to sew. That's kind of just teaching me a lesson. All right, let's take a look at this, whether we actually start on it or not today. So, as you can see, it is the McCall's Fashion Accessories M5284. It is a one size for all pattern. And I have decided that I am going to be making ear F. I'm going to guess that this is the actual apron is the same exact pattern pieces, maybe one piece with a waistband tie as E. And the only difference is the addition of a front center double pocket or a side angle pocket. And as you can see on the back, this is F with that center double pocket. And this is E with the little slanted off to the side pocket. This is more of a gather and this is a pleat. I think I'll go with E. Okay, so E it is. All right, and let's look at the guide. Now, patterns like this are considered craft patterns. If you ever wondered, it is apparel, so to speak, but it is kind of a craft. Okay, so then it tells you what to do with your fabric. So if it's a double and you're supposed to fold your fabric, it shows you how to fold it. If your fabric needs to be cut and then layered, it shows you how to cut it and how to layer it. Now, if you have fabric that you need to fussy cut, in other words, there's a motif on your fabric that you want to either have, say, in the top left corner, the bottom right corner, the center. If you want a specific part of the pattern of your fabric to land in a specific area on the pattern piece before you cut it out, then you're probably going to need more fabric, but for sure you're going to need to be very aware of where you're putting those pattern pieces. And a lot of times there are those who want to use the reverse as the right side. Now in this case, this fabric is, except for the pattern, the color is identical on this side to this side. There's no difference. What switches though is the orientation. So this goes, this is upside down in my purview. I feel like this is an upside down image, but if I turn it to the wrong side, it not only switches to right side up in my purview, but this flower, instead of being heavy this way, looks to be heavy this way. So not this way, facing down, but facing up. So you have to keep that in mind. And if you need the fabric print to be a specific way, and you have the option of switching it around, then you can. Okay? That's, that's basically what all this up here will discuss with you. Okay, now we've decided that we're going to do view E. So I don't need to worry about how to cut out view A, view B, view C, or view D. And that's what's on the front of this. What I might be interested in is this information right here. That's kind of an um, important key if you've never cut out a fabric pattern before. So this tells you the right side of the pattern, the wrong side of the pattern, the right side of the fabric, and the wrong side of the fabric. So white is right side of pattern. White with dots is wrong side of pattern. Totally grayed out is the right side of the fabric. And white 
open is the wrong side of the fabric. Okay, so here is view E pattern for the apron right here. It uses pieces number four and five. So that's the front and that's the pocket. Well, I've already said I don't want to use the pocket. I'm not going to put it on. So I don't have to worry about cutting the pocket out. If you want to cut out the pocket, then that's how you would do that. And I can tell my fabric has been flipped. So the outside of the fabric is showing. The inside of this fold here is the right side of the fabric. It's all kind of wonky. And it's going to change if you're using 45 inch wide or 60 inch wide fabric. Okay, and then we're going to need to cut out the ruffle. So the ruffle, the pocket band, not doing a pocket, and the, oh, okay, the, uh, let's see if I can figure out how to pronounce this, the Weast band, see right there, W-I-A-S-T-B-A-N-D, and the ties. Now that is clearly a proofreading mistake. It's not a smudge, it's not a smear, it's not something that happened during the printing. It is a proofreading mistake. Whenever people tell me, oh, those patterns are checked and double checked and triple checked, of course they are. They also miss things and that is why going through it all the way through to make sure, number one, that you have everything you need before you start doing anything, and number two, there isn't such a catastrophic mistake that you're, you're going to have to try to figure out what to do. If you have an issue with your pattern and it's like, you know, you're going along and you're going along and you're going along and then you hit an area where a whole section of instruction for the view that you are making is missing, you're going to have to research it and try to figure it out. Okay, so I know that my cutting layout is on page two. Up here it's going to say page two of four. Okay, and that's my layout right there. I will be cutting out the apron itself. Then I'll be cutting out the contrast, which would be the ruffle, the pocket band, the waistband, and the ties. Not the pocket band because I'm not cutting out the pocket. And I need to look at two different layouts, one for the apron and then one for all the rest of it. Okay, so I tried my best, but this is the blown up picture from my computer screen. So, you know, it's going to have those little swirlies on it. But I wanted you to be able to see there's the darker blue and then there's the lighter blue. If I zoom... kind of picture wise looks similar and just to kind of give you the full effect this is a swirled version and that will be what I'm going to use for the ruffle the waist and the ties while I was in that part of the house I double checked on the order for the blue Imperial Batiste. It is still scheduled to arrive either tomorrow or the next day. Now, getting back to this business, I know that I'm going to need the piece number four and the waistband and ties.
so I'm going to fold up my pattern, these two pattern pieces, number nine, which I'm going to underline like so, because when you are putting your pattern pieces away, if like me, you want to fold those pattern pieces in such a way that locating them in the envelope is a hundred times easier. You need to know that this is a nine. So if it's a six, underline. If it's a nine, underline. And that way, when you're searching through the pattern pieces because you've cut your fabric and you forgot to mark something, you don't have to unfold every single piece. And then I also went through and with my red marking pen, I just put a star next to or circled the instructions that pertain to view E. Okay, so I've got this. Now, when the fabric arrives that I'm going to be using to make the ruffle, I'll have to pull this back out, or I can just leave it out. And here's another idea. If you don't have a Ziploc bag and you don't want to utilize a Ziploc bag, you can take your instructions as such and... If you have paper clips, which I do, I have a large number of paper clips, but if you don't want to end up with a bunch of paper clips floating around in your sewing room, then you can use your sewing clips. I, on the other hand, am just going to use paper clips because I do use paper clips in my sewing room. As you can see now the flower vines are moving mainly up this one right here was going sideways um, the other way and they were all basically facing the same direction so let's see how this looks on the fold and you can add length if you want to okay I'm gonna hold it next to the bottom edge and at the one inch mark, make a dot and then just continue around at the one inch, make a dot. All right, let's take a look. Let me get you closer. Okay, so I think you can see these little blue dots. I just used the rotary blade and slowly trimmed right along this edge. At this point, if I changed my mind suddenly and wildly and said, I want that pocket right there, which is how it is designed on view E, right there, I could mark it. Or if I wanted to, I could go rogue and I could say, I love that pocket, but I hate that it is sideways. I'm going to put that same pocket, but I'm going to have it just straight up. I don't need it to be a sideways. Okay guys, so thank you for watching. If this other fabric arrives today, I'm probably going to be editing, but uh, the video with the ruffle will be next, 
we'll see which comes first the blue batiste for the baby bubble or the ditzy calico for the ruffle at this point it's anybody's guess thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up if you haven't already subscribed please consider doing so i would love to have you thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video bye